myself. Where did I put that? <clears throat> now, here we go. Oops. I kind of, uh, all right. So, um, Pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12th, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, general law chapter 30A, section 18. This meeting of the TAC is being conducted via remote participation. Uh, it's going to be recorded. I think Amber's pushed the button already. Um, encouraging you to mute and public discussion. Oh, that's it, okay. So, hey, thanks everybody for coming out on this snowy day. It's uh, in years past, I sort of remember this time of year fretting about getting quorum or you know, wondering whether town hall was gonna be closed and we could meet at all. It's funny how uh, everything seems to have changed recently. Um, I tried to get them to cancel it because of the snow and then you told me no. <laughs> well, you know, actually I, I wondered about that because I don't know if there was some some invisible connection to open offices in town hall that is not in that preamble that I have to read about changing the rules and everything else. Um, I'm just as glad that it's not, except as we were talking about earlier, the, the kids who won't get a snow day. Although it sounds like many of them did anyway. Um, <clears throat> so, um, the, um, the uh, under announcements and public comment, um, I wanted to um, chat a little bit about um, what Tracy and I heard at the Precinct 5 meeting <clears throat> the other day about the Pomeroy intersection. Oh. District, talking... District 5. I'm, I'm sorry, you know. <laughs> That was born in any event, District 5, um, which is bigger than, which is not Precinct 5 in any way. Um, and just, um, I, I, I want to do that because I know it's pending. We don't, we haven't seen the plans yet and, and our involvement is not strictly decided, but um, I just wanted to keep us up on what um, the public are thinking, what the community is saying about the Pomeroy intersection specifically. Um, so um, I don't know, um, I, I, you, 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 I know I didn't ask you about this beforehand, Darcy, but I don't know if you wanna, if you want to uh, give us your impression of what you heard and, and let Tracy and I say, no, no, that's not at all right. What we heard was something else completely or-, or uh, Yeah. Uh, um, I can mention a couple things. One is um, there was a little kerfuffle after the meeting about some people from North Amherst uh, up in arms because of the thought that this would be coming up before the North Amherst project. Um, but then it kind of, uh, the conversation came around to, to um, sort of accepting that um, most, almost this entire project is going to be paid for by the MassWorks grant, right? Is that right, Guilford? Hopefully. Um, so I think that sort of uh, assuaged people's, um, you know, concern about that. And so, and the other thing was that, um, and tell me if you, disagree about this, but it seemed like there was a pretty uniform um, um, opinion that the a roundabout would be not the favorite alternative chosen by the people at the meeting. Um, so I, I would say that was super majority of the people there, or maybe unanimous, <laughs> I don't know, <laughs> close. Um, but uh, so because I guess the, 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 the application was for either a roundabout or um, upgrading the, the actual intersection, um, the light as it is, um, and people 
said that they didn't think that it was necessary to have a roundabout. And then there was some discussion of what is a roundabout uh, as opposed to a rotary and Alyssa Brewer informed us. Um, and uh, so, yeah, those were the main things that I saw coming out of it. You know, people had, there were, there was a lot of interest. It was clear that people came to the meeting for that reason, as opposed to the, the, the other topic, which was just sort of the budget. Um, they were wait, waiting patiently for that topic to come up because everybody was interested in the, yeah. in the Samurai Village. That's really all I have to say about it. Yeah, Tra Tracy. Um, so Darcy, I had a question. Um, I had been looking for it, but I haven't seen it. I was curious about what was in the proposal, like when it was getting funded in terms of what they were. I mean, I've read, you know, the news articles and so on, but just to kind of go back to what plan the planning department and the town's application actually said, you know, as you're, I mean, were there a lot of specifics there or was it just kind of more general? Uh, we never saw the application. That's uh, that's a question for Guilford. We only the town council also only saw the um, cover letter that went with it. Um, to my knowledge, I mean, I guess I'd be interested to see sort of what what the vision was in the proposal because I mean, Chris Bressa mentioned at the last meeting or some meeting I was at, like that I know that the planning department had worked um, on you know, redesigns for this intersection for a long time. Um, so it's something that they've obviously put a lot of time into and thought about for, you know, a couple of generations worth of staff. And so I'd be interested to know if there, if those details can be made available, it seems like it would be really helpful, both for the TAC, but also for the community to kind of understand like the bigger picture beyond what, you know, the short news article says in the Gazette. I mean, I, I think that part of the, the request, and then again, I'm going to sort of ask and make this a question to Guilford. He's over there uh, for me. Um, is is it includes the design, and uh, <laughs> and um, and I know there have been all kinds of there has been as as you say, Tracy, a lot of work done on this designing this in the past, but every one of those maybe the more like concepts and designs really fit what um, the request was um, rather than the other way around. Um, <clears throat> so is that right, Guilford? Did I? So sort of, the, the story begins back in about 1995, 96. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> so I wasn't here. Um, I, I, was in, I was in South Carolina at the time. Uh, but in 95 and 96, the director before me, Noel Ryan, got, a, um, got the state to put the intersection on the transportation improvement plan. And at that time, the road was owned by the state. And we convinced the state, or Noel convinced the state, that he need, they needed to do an improvement there. But there was only a stop sign at that intersection then. The state came up with a plan, and they proposed to start building it about 2000. 2003, 2002, 2003, about the time I started in, with the town. Um, <clears throat> there was a kind of a disagreement over the design at the time it was proposed. Mass DOT was not into bicycles. It was not in the pedestrians. It was in the moving vehicles through the intersection. So there wasn't a lot of intersection improvements for pedestrians or bicycles. Um, the town said, no, we want to do more. And the state said, well, if you want to do more, you need to take it over and redesign it. Um, so the town took over the intersection. And what we did was a quick and dirty. We put the traffic lights that are up there now. And that's what came out of that. Um, then the DRB with the planning department actually laid out an intersection improvement, which uh, was all traffic lights. Um, not much different. They did have a multi-use path that was much wider than the current multi-use path on South Pleasant Street at that area. And then it just kind of sat and languished um, and not got, it didn't get funded and didn't get moved forward. Since that time, since they 
did that. We built the roundabouts in South Amherst at Atkins Corner. We built the round, we in the UMass built the roundabouts at um, Eastman and Governor's Drive and East Pleasant Street and Triangle Street. And then UMass just added the fourth one with the one at Fearing Street right now. So <clears throat> at the time it was being developed and it was first thought about, roundabouts weren't even an option we looked at. So it's what the DRB did was a traditional intersection. Uh, we've played around with it since then and we've actually laid out a roundabout and worked out our roundabout configuration for it. Um, so the, the last works grant We'll get money to actually collect data. We'll go through, do traffic counts, do pedestrian counts, bicycle counts, and then we'll model both intersections that we have so far. We'll model the roundabout and we'll model the regular intersection and see which one comes out the best. The only weird thing going on right now is that our traffic flows are post pandemic and haven't returned to the pre pandemic chaos we have in their intersection. It's getting close but it's not there yet. Thank, thank you. So, so I, would, I would add one other, a couple of other notes that I took away from the meeting. It's, it's, it's true that most of the people who spoke um, said they didn't like the idea of a roundabout. That's now, I, I happen to know that not everybody at the, at the meeting uh, is against roundabouts. I, for one, would support it. Um, and Tracy, thank you very much for, you know, you did put in a lot of, of information to the group on how a well-designed roundabout could work. Um, but the, the most important thing that I heard um, is that it came almost right at the very end of the discussion, and it was almost a throwaway line. Um, somebody said, you know, what's, what's really important about this intersection should be, should not be cars. The intersection really does need to serve, um, should be set up to serve that burgeoning um, town center, meaning pedestrians. I think they were they were thinking about pedestrians, but I'm I'm thinking about um, all the modes that would would go through that intersection. Um, of course, that all has to be tempered by the fact that you know there are tens of thousands of trips that go through that intersection on every day. And we would hear very different responses if there were long lines waiting to get through the light, which is possible. Um, but that's that's um, um, <clears throat> uh, anything, anything else um, we want to say on that. Uh, I, I don't want to get too far into this because, like I say, we don't we nothing has come to us yet. We don't know. Um, well, we don't. Nothing has come to us yet to work on. Although um, I'm anxious, I'd be delighted to start any time. Tracy. Um, so I just had a quick um, comment, just, you know, as Guilford was speaking just about when he's modeling, you know, when they do have the traffic volume data, again, it sounds like there's questions about when that data would be collected since we are like in a COVID state right now and that may not reflect what the traffic would be at the intersection longer term. But um, I guess the question, I mean, I don't know if this is going to come back to the TAC or not, but just kind of questions about because um, Guilford was just saying, you know, whatever the better performing model is, like that's the design that they would probably go with, I guess, just to understand what the criteria are for like, what is the better performing model, right? So in terms of traffic volume or other criteria and so on, it does seem if it is going to be a village center, it's not just about like moving vehicles better, so. Yeah, and just a reminder that um, we had, uh, we had sort of um, preliminarily approved our six tiers of level of service for bikes, peds, and transit, and set a target for level three for bikes, level two for beginner bikes, and, and level one for pedestrians. And the research that we did suggested that that level of service really should be based on people's experience of a place rather than any count. Um, so we were um, we were heading that way in terms of our analysis for um, those non car modes. So so that's that's uh, Darcy. <clears throat> yeah, I would just add um, just because it's my district and I live right there, so I, I have a lot of experience on that corner. Uh, is that it feels as far as the the existing roundabouts are 
in a different type of configuration that, than this area because it's right in the center of the of the village center and each of the four corners is an important part of the village center and the the problem is easy access walking from corner to corner to access the different parts of that town center and uh right now it's it's i think that if you did a count you'd you'd find that not very many people try to cross the streets there because it's not, it's dangerous. It's, you know, and so for me, it would just be, I see it as like a challenge to try to get it to be pedestrian friendly so that people. Yeah, and I, that's, that's, I think that is the most, that, like I said, that was the most important takeaway that I took from the, the meeting was that uh, the emphasis needs to shift from what it was back in the 90s, which is get the cars through, the heck with the pedestrians, um, to the other way around, get the people through. Um, of course, you know, keeping the traffic flowing, but uh, Kim. Yeah, I, I mean, just to your point, Darcy, you know, I, I had initially felt that way as well. Um, so the roundabout on Triangle, um, you know, that connects UMass to Triangle and downtown and whatever, because that's a route my kids used to, had been using to walk to school. And honestly, that it, it's, those intersections feel now, me crossing them and my children crossing them alone are actually really safe, like people, which is surprised, which was kind of surprising to me. So I would suggest trying to like trying some of that out because it's, I mean, cars are really good because they're, they're approaching those roundabouts and with caution, you know, to begin with. So, you know, it depends on the size of the roundabout, I guess, too, because like the ones at Atkins, I don't feel are as safe as that one in Triangle, but um, you should try it out because it changed my mind. Yeah. Bruce? I would echo what Kim said and also take a look at the roundabout at the university that is up by the uh, graduate research tower at the north end of campus. That one to me seems like the best one in town that as a pedestrian and as a biker, I feel very safe crossing there. I've never had anybody like try to speed through. Uh, I think it's a really good one. So one of the things that that I'm, I'm looking forward to as as the design goes through on this um, is is um, something similar to what we saw for the um, the roundabout at the university the um, um, at the end of uh, North Pleasant there um, the um, the data that I forget who the engineering firm was uh, were very good and they, they they did a very thorough analysis of of you know pedestrian safety of vehicle efficiency of, of all of the things that we want an intersection to do um and then that 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 roundabout is what came out of that research at, because it performed better than you know the smartest of smart intersections and extra lanes and turning this and stopping that um uh eve so I'll, I have to send two different people. One is Guilford, who will say yes, but but um, that can you hear me? Yes. Um, so one is Guilford, who will say yes, but that intersection is bigger than the one at Triangle, and the the the, the circle at Triangle had to be smaller, and um, uh, so it's a little more complicated. That one on the north end of campus was easier to do. And then the second person I want to send is Marcus, who just would say. Don't forget, you can do roundabouts that are sort of like really little mini roundabouts that still can be traffic calming. And with that, I want to ask you guys if I ever sent the Bend, Oregon roundabout policy design manual to you guys. No, not that I remember. You, okay, you did. I'm going to send it out because it's it's just yeah. it's nice to just like there's just so thorough on this is how you do roundabouts and situation and it doesn't mean we have to do it but I think um, part of why people don't like roundabouts is because they have an assumption of of like you know the Atkins roundabout is being the prototype and if we have a, a wider idea of what they can be I think you can actually retain the sense of that that center if it's done well but I think that's a legitimate 
concern. We had that concern when we were talking about the North Amherst intersection and putting a roundup out there that keeping the sense of place of the village center is a crucial part of what we want to do. So, so there, there's a preview of, of what, what the, yeah. we might be doing and thinking about um, if we get to tackle the Pomeroy um, intersection. A nice picture there, Guilford. I'm, I'm not, of course, they go around the wrong way in that country, but that, that's another story. Um, so so <laughs> it's, it's either it's a mirror image or it's in Britain. No, it's, uh, it's in New Zealand. In New Zealand, oh. Because the rest, the building on the on my left shoulder um, has a restaurant in it on the first floor, and you sit on the sidewalk and watch people drive around. And then the other ones are businesses as well. It's kind of a cool place. It's yeah. the center of their business district. Yeah, yeah, we, we we know how you think about these things, Gilbert. I like to do little subtle things. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that those buildings will be in the future of Pomeroy Lane. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wow. I, I, yeah. So um, the, uh, another the 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 next comment, I guess that's what we're we're in. Um, I wanted to to share with you is um, that we got a note. We the the uh, transportation advisory committee directly got a note, and I copied you all minutes ago. I sent you an email with a copy of it. Uh, we got a letter um, requesting traffic calming in Elf Hill. Um, I just wanted to, um, to to talk to to, to say that, and um, you know this will be a, this is a, an interesting it's an interesting request um, for me because it joins a number of traffic calming requests that we had been getting before the pandemic seems to have stopped everything, um, but. Um, this is very reminiscent of, well, of all of them. Uh, people just, I, I don't know how familiar people are with the neighborhood, but there's um, um, kind of a funny, a, a, a road that's almost parallel to Bay Road and ends up, Elf Hill ends up carrying a lot of the traffic that could be on Bay Road through this neighborhood, kind of like, like Lincoln Avenue carries a lot of traffic that really should be on University Drive through the neighborhood. Um, and with a lot of traffic comes um, a few um, ill-considerate drivers and just the problems with traffic, you know, with, with arterial traffic in, um, in uh, residential neighborhoods. <clears throat> so um, I, I don't know, um, I would like to uh, consider putting this on our agenda. And, and I know there's some comments that Eve has to make about agenda setting and everything else. I'll get to that later. Um, but um, to think about <clears throat> putting this on and considering what we would want to do to, to answer this. I'm, I'm gonna send back a reply um, to, I guess it's, it's to, to, to Megan Rhodes. Um, just saying, thank you. We got it, and we're gonna, you know, we're going to do what we can with it, which is a little bit up in the air. Um, and uh, so, I begin to think about it. Um, as usual, as you might expect, there's some suggestions about this kind of sign and that kind of rule, and various, you know, changes. Um, I actually went to look at it, and um, I would, I would love to even consider something as dramatic as just removing road, uh, forbidding cars from traveling between um, a conservation area that's on the Belcher Town, Belcher Town side of the end of the road and the neighborhood itself. So that traffic that goes into the neighborhood goes into the neighborhood. Traffic that is arterial goes on Bay Road and then comes around on Warren Wright. Any event, um, you may want to look at that. And and so, you know, this this is um, it's, it's actually, it's a very nice note and it's very thorough. So um, we'll be looking at that. Um, we'll, I, I would want to put that onto our projects list that we're going to talk about a little bit later. Um, so what do you think? I, I, I'm not sure that you've all had a chance to read it because as I say, I just sent it to you like at, at half past <clears throat> an hour ago. I read it, but I wonder if we might just pull up somebody could pull up the streets so we could actually look at you know 
together kind of just look at the question. is looking very, very, uh, very industrious there. I think it's very steep, isn't it? Mm -hmm. um, the, yeah, it is. The yeah. road that they're talking about, yeah, Elf Hill is, but the road that they want to remove is not. It's 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 very flat and straight, and that's that's part of the problem. It's the people that are coming down to it on Elf Hill or going up to it that's the problem. So, um, yeah, I, it, it. So one of the things that came to mind, and and you'll see this in the picture uh, when Guilford pulls it up, if he if he is, it can. Um, is that the the concerns may not match the problem, the, the perceived problem may not be the actual problem. And so one of the things that, that I'm wondering is what kind of research we would want to um, suggest and recommend um, uh, be done to, um, to, to really to understand uh, what the best solution would be for this. So it's, it's Hulst Road turning into Orchard Street that seems to carry the, um, the, the bulk of the speeding traffic um, <clears throat> because it, it's Hulst Road, uh, Hulst slash Orchard is a shortcut to Warren Wright, which you know it takes a lot of traffic to the north. It's a shortcut so you don't have to go around Bay Road. It's, it's um, in order to get to Warren Wright on Bay Road, from the intersection there at Hulse, you have to go up the hill and around all those corners and make that crazy left turn. Um, <clears throat> whereas if you go on um, Orchard, it's yeah, just yeah. a, you know, zip you do da. Got it. So, so that that is something that um, I'd like to put onto our, uh, our, our our plate and to think about. So what? Uh, sorry, what is the um, what is the other issue with Elp Road, which so I mean, um, it's steep? Yes, I understand that, but um, do people use that as a shortcut as well? I th so this is the thing. I you know I'm going to have to go back and, and understand this better, and I think we need to understand what's going on better. Uh, but this says that large trucks turn onto Elf Hill from Bay Road um, by accident. Oh, okay. um, but then, and then um, the, the other reports are that um, the stretch there where Hulse turns into Orchard, that people speed to the point where, you know, I've heard of people, you know, having to jump off the road to get out of the way safely. Um, any event. Um, well, so yeah, th this is, this is. Area, according to Guilford's map, I mean, there's lots of houses that. In that yeah. Oh, it's, it's, it's very, yeah, it's, it's. It is a nice neighborhood. It's Don't you live there? Don't you live there, Aaron? No, I live around the corner on ah. Southeast Street, and and um, nobody's going to pay attention to me if I ask for traffic calming. On it's <laughs> it's it's arterial. We do have a nice speed uh, automatic speed limit so speed sign, which is which is nice. Um, yeah. So, why why are? I mean, the question is, why are trucks turning onto Elf Hill? Like, I, I, I don't even... know. And, um, but, you know, this, this is, I think that this is a, a, a legitimate request, you know, to, to yeah, consider out and, and yeah. among, you know, that list of requests that we were looking at. And um, so. Can we not just make like the intersection a three way stop? <laughs> Uh, well, I mean, I'm giving probably up on, not because um, roundabout. Bay Road is is a uh, is not a, Bay Road. Uh, I'm thinking Holt so, and Echo Hill. Mm -hmm. yeah, I don't, I don't want to solve Elf it Hill. now. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, and we'll 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 figure out how to solve it. But um, beyond saying that, <clears throat> this is very reminiscent of issues that we had on Wildflower Lane. Mm -hmm. I mean, on on, on Larkspur, um, where ultimately, when a study was made of the traffic going through there. It was all local. The complaints really ended up being about local traffic, right, right, um, not so. So don't know, uh, but I just wanted to 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 share this with everybody so mm. that um, um, it's not a complete surprise. I mean, it is a straight street, and it is continuation of you know Orchard. 
Um, yeah, even traffic, traffic calming could, you know, put a couple of chicanes in there, could help too, something like that. Yeah, and, and that, that may be, um, you know, that may be reasonable, that may be mm -hmm. a good solution, but um, I mean, we're, we're developing a whole bag of tricks. I mean, we've yeah. got, you know, speed tables, pillows, bumps, mm -hmm. whatever the official title is, um, you know, signs. Um, you know, we don't have any chicanes. Um, those, I think, you know, they're, they're, well, as with everything, there are issues with every one of them. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but this came in and at some point, um, I would like to to apply our tools to decide where this would fit into the hierarchy of things, and then subsequently, you know, figure out what we would need to do to understand this problem and make a recommendation. Tracy, so, Aaron, I had a question. So, when Megan sent her request, did she just send it to you? Did she also send it to her counselors, or to the town manager, or to Guilford, or it, it, it went to it Guilford? Go? And she shotgunned it. And then she shotgunned it. Okay. Uh, I mean, the copy that I got was uh, CC to, to Guilford. Now, isn't she? I guess she's a senior transportation planner. Is that up at the Franklin Regional Cog? If that's right. Anyway, um, yes, I think exactly. it's irrelevant. Um, she actually, she actually didn't say where she works. She just told us she was a senior transportation. No, I understand. Planner. I think she's up there because I recall I used to work there a long time ago. Um, yeah. The, um, I guess so. I mean in terms of like formulating a response to it and particularly if there was going to be any solution that requires funding i mean it does to me a little bit come back to the question questions related to the tax you know charge and scope and how much power we have right right we don't have a budget per se right so we're not in charge of any DPW or other right. staff. And so no. um, I guess, I mean, this is exactly, to that's come exactly back to right. the larger questions about when these requests come. I mean, I think, you know, when I've listened in on the TSO meetings, I think the town manager makes some really good points, right? That when somebody comes with the request such as this or other similar or, you know, other things related to transportation, um, you don't want them to feel like they have to go through a lot of different committees or different people. They just want their problem addressed and they want to know, yeah. you know, that it can be in the queue, like it's being considered. And so it really does come back to the larger questions about how those um, questions are dealt with. I mean, one thing they, they talked about at the TSO meeting is, and different TSO members at the, um, December 3rd meeting and different TSO members had different perspectives on this, but like, should the TSO committee be quote, like a complaint committee, you know, where they're like the first, the one stop, first stop shopping in terms of um, yeah. people filing their complaints and then knowing that they're like on the road to getting addressed, so. Well, that, that's, yeah, that's exactly, you're, you're right. This does, does, this is what I imagine, you know, it gets to the heart of how the response, you know, of, of the response that either TSO or TAC needs to make to it. And I mean, right now, our suggestion is that, you know, we take this, we work on it, we will apply two sets of tools to it. Our, our you know, prioritization, you know, how important is this when you consider it? And then second, the tools of, well, how do we figure out what the right thing is to do here, what kind of survey, traffic study, mm -hmm. um, you know, maybe if we hover drones for, I don't know. Um, uh, but that's, yes, uh, that's exactly it. And that, that's, that's, that's why I was, uh, that's why I was interested in, in sharing this with everybody. Oh, definitely, um, yeah. So um, I don't know if there's anything more on that that we'd like to, to talk about. I mean, about. it does seem like on the Google map, question i mean it sounds like like she's suggesting in her letter right that google maps is directing people that way and that's happened in other residential neighborhoods as well both in amherst and in other towns um it you know there are ways to get google to stop doing that. <laughs> yes um, and, and so. that, that may be the issue but um it you know it sounds like um, a lot of the problems are not people who are looking at their GPS and are lost and are taking L pill by mistake. Yes, that seems to be part of it. And maybe that's Google directing them. 
but there's also, it sounds like there's local knowledge and hey, this is a flat shortcut. No, of course. That I'm taking. Okay. So, and the, again, this is stuff that, that we have to, we have to just figure out how to understand. Does it? That's, you know. But right, like some of the mapping algorithms, like I remember around California, you know, when you're looking at like shortest path algorithms, right? So I know in California mm -hmm. when there would be fires, like so like the neighborhood, the, some of the algorithms would send people like through the neighborhoods with the fires because those would be the neighborhoods with no traffic congestion because mm -hmm. there was, you know, I mean, anyway. I mean, those are some bigger issues, but some in some of those cases, like if you contact those vendors that they can, um, they can fix it. Yeah, and, and that may be part of what what we recommend here or, or even do here. Um, well, one thing does Elf Hill yes, Road Marcus. actually uh, meet the criteria to have a steep grade sign on it? Because that seems to be their problem too. Yeah, of course. Of course, once they're on the grade, it's too late. They've made the their commitment. Well, I mean, it, it, you know, it's, it's you right get at the a warning of the sign of a steep grade before you at the entrance to Elf Hill Road or whatever. Does it? Does I mean, it literally, if, certain... they, if they looked down the intersection as they're coming off of Bay Road. I mean, the, 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 the steep grade starts yeah, right 10 there. feet from the top. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah. right. But so, sometimes it, some people need a, you know, something to smack them in the face before they yeah. see it. So. Smack them in the face. I, I like that. Eve. Eve. So two things. One is just a reminder that um, when we read the TAC charge closely, it never said that the TAC was supposed to handle all of this. It said that we were supposed figure out who would handle all of this. And I, I do think that, yeah, sorry, I, I keep saying we, I, it was a we, it's a you. Um, but, um, but, but I do think that, you know, what Tracy's bringing up and you're saying we're waiting for Paul it is an important point to say, like, well, I will, I'll just remind you that um, when it was a we last December, we came up with a list of like administrative and financial priorities for the next year. And one of the things we said was hire a part-time um, uh, multimodal transportation planner. And Guilford, I recall you and Paul saying that might be moving forward. And, and I'm wondering what happened with that. Um, Cause it does seem like this kind of small thing, it would be good to have someone other than the TAC, you know, vet, vet it and, and and to add to that like the prioritization system that we're coming up with might not actually be the right tool for this because right. it's going to be focused on bicycle and pedestrian networks and this is not going to rank high there but um but it might you know be a relatively low cost thing to you know put a foot out across half of the thing saying no through traffic and you know or no left turn and problem solved it's no big deal um but it doesn't seem like it should have to wait for a prioritization system which is on hold nor um your um moving forward with the new charge I would second. Eve, we is okay, just by the way. That's all right. I, I would second what Eve is saying. I mean, it seems like some of the prioritization system, it has to do with like the the more major expenses, right? We have, as we talked about at the last meeting, right? And I still have like an older version of them, but like we have the big list of like the bigger projects that require big money and the little projects, right? And I think, you know, one of the things I heard at the TSO meeting was, particularly you know, like from some of the counselors who've been around for a while, like people were saying, well, what about pothole requests and what about sidewalk requests and like a lot of smaller things that necessarily, I wouldn't even, I mean, I haven't been on the TAC very long, but I wouldn't even necessarily expect that some of those would come to the TAC at all. Like, because we're thinking about like the bigger vision in terms of what our transportation system looks like longer term and where are the key resources allocated. But if there's a pothole, like, you know, that's really not our domain. I don't see that as our domain so much, but, you know, some counselors have interpreted the current um, tax charge to say that that is our domain, but yeah. anyway. So, all right, well, more on this, I guess this is, this is going to develop. <laughs> um, so, um, so Aaron, just to follow up, so it sounds like at this point you were going to follow up with her and just say that we're going to investigate well, it. Well, I'm going to, I'm just going to, um, yes, I'm going to respond to Meg saying, look, it's, we, we hear it, it's here. 
and um, exactly how it's going to be dealt with is not clear, but um, you know, it's something that, that we'll keep track of. Um, and um, sort of, you know, I think that we should be responsible for, you know, answering our correspondence as, as, in, as um, uh, forthright and effective way as we can. And I don't know, uh, is often not very satisfactory, but maybe the only answer we have. Um, I don't know, but we're working on it, I think is closer to what we should say. And uh, maybe as, a, as the dialogue de develops, we'll figure out something more useful to say, but for right now it's, thank you very much. Um, we'll get back to you. Tracy. So just, just a quick question. So since Guilford forwarded you that shotgun request, so I'm assuming that nobody else from the town then is also responding to her as well. So like is the town manager or anybody else gonna also be penning something different? Um, a, a good question, I don't know. The note is to TAC directly. And so okay. clearly my response, now that I understand who else was on the CC list, even though mm. I didn't see it, I'll make sure the response is copy to them. No, that well. makes sense. Yeah. That, um, but yeah, that's a good point. Thank you, Tracy. And just to be clear, Aaron, so what are you saying about what, like you're telling this person that you guys are going to get back to her? What, yeah, oh yeah. I mean, what's the, what's the, like, I mean, I just think that when I was on the TAC, this did happen a lot. Like we gave, like, we don't know, we haven't figured out our process yet. And we have been moving forward on that process, but, um, I, what's the mechanism and, and the timeline to get back? To right. Her? No, I mean, I those are good questions. Yeah, I don't know. Um, but, um, the, I mean, part of the, the, uh, the, the value of copying everybody who's also received this letter um, is sort of the, the implicit question, hey, you know, we got this letter, you know, because people have an expectation of how things are working, um, is that right? And um, clearly, you know, I, I'm glad Darcy's is overhearing all of this because part of the response will definitely be, you know, uh, you know she'll be responsible for or, or part of, um, you know, and Guilford, you know, and Paul. So, um, it's yes, it raises a lot of questions. Um, and, you know, we're going to answer them as best and as honestly as we can. Darcy. Is there a, is the prioritization list that, that you said you're going to put it on the list? Is that a public list? Uh, Guilford has the list. It's not oh, yeah. on the website at this time. Yeah. Oh, it's not on the website? But now there's a new website, Guilford. Maybe we can. Yeah. Did you, did you notice most things didn't change? Yeah, right. well, yes, yes, we did. So, some of the oh. top level stuff is do you, different. Do you have that but... handy, Guilford, just by the way? Uh, in, in the your website? Magic... No, no, not yeah, the website, the, the, the spreadsheet with the, three, with the three tabs. Oh, yeah, hold on. And actually, I have a related question, Darcy, just, I mean, since the council is, you know, the keepers of the public way and so on, and the TSO is, you know, helping with that and even thinking about changes to the public way policy tonight. Um, I mean, do you feel like this is something that should also come to the TSO or the council? Traffic issues? Well, just, I mean, because it involves the public way, right? It involves people's concerns about the public way and the council is, are the keepers of the public way and oversee public way policies and changes and so on. Yeah, that's- Tracy, by this, I think by this, did you mean the Elk Hill issue? Yeah, the Elk Hill, yeah, that's what I meant specifically, okay. yeah. Sorry. Oh, there, this is the list? Yes. This is the list. Now th this is this is the list of you know, how we prioritize things um, before um, any substantial work was done on uh, describing how we prioritize things, which is what um, um, Bruce and Tracy's subcommittee and Eve's subcommittee is working on. Um, 
and I'm hoping that they can speak to you a little bit when we get to number nine in our agenda. Um, but um, nonetheless, the 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 I would I would say that the concepts, the ideas that were very nascent then and are being solidified in the subcommittee's matrix um, do help organize this list. Um, now this is this is just these are just things that 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 got up it became projects. Um, the other tab there, the citizen requests, is just the list of all the stuff that that came in. There's a you know oh. ton of things and and the and the disposition of them, many of which is just no, sorry, we're, we, you know this is not something that we're going to deal with right now. Um. So. Um, did you say that this is public now or or um that's i i know a lot of counselors that would like to see this list well so so no you don't want to see this list there's nothing at the so same maybe i want to jump no ahead here um to the to our next agenda item which is to uh um it starts out with with an appreciation uh, darcy sent sent me a note um that uh, with some suggestions, it might be helpful to collect some documents. Um, and I, I think Guilford got a copy of this and most of this is, is I, I'm afraid his, but um, I wanted to specifically, there were, there were two things that, that Darcy mentioned um, that we um, collect documents that are regarding the efforts of staff to consolidate residential traffic and parking complaints in TAC or elsewhere. That's kind of what this is. And then guidelines and the criteria that we've developed regarding how complaints should be prioritized and decided. So um, the, I wanted to, to sort of uh, to talk about our response to that. Now, um, there's also just Darcy, by the way, I've not heard from either um, Pam or Ryan um, any specific requests. And I don't know if Guilford got something and, um, and I didn't, but I, there, there was a, you, you mentioned that they had said um, that these requests were going to come in. And, and I was, I was waiting. I was hopeful that, that it, within the intervening two weeks that uh, I would have seen something specific. So what I had intended to was for us to form a response for the TAC tonight to form a sort of a very specific and directed response um, to specific and directed requests. Um, don't have those requests. Do have your suggestions for which, like I say, I'm very appreciative and would like to respond to them or at least form our response. And 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 maybe, I don't know, get, get a sense from you if you should be proactive and say, look, I, you know, we understand that there is, are these questions that are thinking about being asked. Here's our proactive response or not. I mean, I don't know how best to, to, to approach this because I wasn't there. And um, did, have you heard from the town manager? Is he still working on a revised charge? I, I bug him every few days and I keep being promised and except for the promises, not, I've not heard anything. Yeah, well, I mean, if, <laughs> not completely. I didn't mean to put you on the spot. <laughs> I, 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 you know, it's it's a strange thing because it feels like we're uh, we're seeking a problem that may not exist. Um, and um, I think that uh, TSO would be really interested to see this stuff. <laughs> um, to to see, you know. Uh, how, um, what a good system it is and, you know, how you do have criteria and you do have this list because this is kind of a mystery to town councilors about how this all works. Um, you know, I think that we, it's, it's of interest to find, to, to understand, you know, like how things progress on this list and, you know, whether PAC makes a recommendation to the town staff or do you work on it together or how it all works. Um, 
Um, so uh, I think that that if you can if you can um, compile some of that stuff, that would be good. At the last, I think it was two meetings ago. One counselor asked me, you know, what's happening with TAC? You know, like, aren't we going to have TAC on the agenda? And I just said, I'm all, I'm wait, you know, I'm waiting to to hear from TAC that they are feel like they're ready to come back. So, I think you you have the leeway to gather your materials and, and get prepared to go back. And when you're ready, you can let us know. Okay. Thank you. That, that's that's right. Tracy. I mean, I guess Darcy procedurally, would it make sense because this list is here and you know there is, so there are some procedures already in place. It sounds like, you know, we don't know when we'll hear back about the charge, um, and it may be a little bit iterative with the town manager, but do you think, I mean, I know the TSO also has a lot of other things on its agenda. Like, would it make sense for the TAC to come to the TSO you know, uh, multiple times? Like, for example, could like sometime in January come back and discuss at least this element and then come back again? Or does it all have to be like kind of an all or nothing take up a lot of the TSO meeting when I know that your agendas are so busy already. Yes, I'm just, I, like I said, I, I feel like, you know, if, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. You know that old saying? <laughs> well, it really doesn't work 100% right either. So, yeah, and, and 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 actually, yeah. So I mean, it, it's in and, a way. What, if it's not broke, it is bent because of the shift what? in how town governance works. But, but it's also sort of broke because some counselors have the impression, you know, that basically the TAC has a charge that the TAC doesn't like live up to its like responsibilities given its written charge from the time that there was a select board. I mean, it was listening to the last TSO meeting. It was pretty. It was challenging to not feel a little bit defensive for the TAC because, I mean, things have changed since there was a select board. Like we have a council and they just created this public way policy and the charge goes back a number of years. And many of the people who are on the TAC then aren't on the TAC now. And like, there's all kinds of factors. So, I mean, can it I, does seem like it's a... helpful to go back to the TSO sooner than later, in my opinion. Can I ask Guilford, please, uh, what did you mean when you said it's really not working? Well, I mean, if you're still trying to come together with how you'll prioritize things. I mean, if you look at the big chart that's up on the screen now, you have three priorities that you put in over the three years. Um, th those were done, but you didn't have, you, you didn't really use your priority system that you're working on and how to, how to make them the, your priority. Um, so the priority prioritizing uh, prioritization system is what has to really one of the things I think needs to be finished. So it's easier for you guys to to say these, this is why we chose right. this. Um, the three we have on here that are your priorities were easy to say were higher priorities. Um, the rest of the ones on here were projects that were either left over that were going on before the TAC came into existence or have popped up because of um possible funding sources that may all of a sudden appear um, and the town staff were trying to get ready for a funding source that might sh show up so where is the prioritization process so we uh, um we ah. a presentation to talk about that but it's not been on the agenda so we didn't feel like we could talk about it last time or this time uh -huh. Yeah. Well, ex ex so I'm going to, I'm going to, and this this is um, this is an oversight on my part. Which, um, but I, I'm going to allow, or offer, or hope that um, that that uh, you can speak to it um, uh, under our number nine committee comments. It's not what I intended, but um, I think it's, that's that's going to be what I'd like to use in this case. And uh, about the pedestrian and bicycle uh, plan, I just totally spaced that. So that's, that's mea culpa. 
Um, and um, but if if um, uh, if Tracy and Bruce and Eve, if you have that matrix that, that you've been working on, um, um, I just want to say that at, at, at some point, um, I'm expecting that it'll be done by the subcommittee and would come to the full committee for um, you know whatever you know final brush up and and approval you know so that yes we're going to adopt it and that you know to the TSO or to whomever needs to see it. So um, is is there something we could look at even if I didn't put on the on the agenda? Specifically? Yeah, I prepared a presentation that I've had ready to go for a few weeks. Oh, okay. Um, Since before the oh, last TAC. Okay. Yeah, and um, Bruce and I looked at the presentation with Eve and so on. So Yeah, we worked on it together. Absolutely. But um, I, I imagine, of course, that's what I would expect. Yeah, so that's we were ready, to, we were ready to give it to the la at the last TAC meeting, and then we weren't on the agenda. So okay, so um, it's 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 there's still a couple more things in front of it. I don't know. Darcy needs to go at six fifteen. Right. So. Yes. Um, so let's. Yes, we can do this. Let's do this. Yeah, let's do it. Eve, Eve are you ready? Yeah. Of course she's ready. To... She's been ready for weeks. <laughs> Thanks, Eve. I just have to find which screen I had it open on. Sorry. Uh, there it is. Yes, yeah, the marvels of technology. Yeah, and this will look familiar to those of you who are on the TAC last year. There's a little bit of a repeat, but it's been updated. Yeah. Um, so, Eve, can you send me a, a copy of it? Because I'd like to send it to uh, Bernie. Sure, yeah. And, you know, with, with some <clears throat> notes. So the All right. So um, yeah. So the subcommittee is um, me, Tracy, and Bruce. Um, and so this is a working draft of toward a system of prioritization. And we're focusing on cyclists, pedestrians, and transit users, including people of all ages and people with disabilities. Not to say that these modes of transportation are more important than cars and trucks and buses and emergency vehicles, but because we feel like this is a really important thing that TAC has been trying to really help um, support these modes as a network system that can really um, support alternative transportation. So we looked at a lot of documents, um, including background from the TAC, from the state. Um, and then we also went out, sorry, I thought this was gonna be on the next slide. You can tell I haven't looked at this for three weeks, but um, we also went out and we researched a whole bunch of other um, prioritization systems all across the country. So why is it important to improve pedestrian, bicycling, and transit in Amherst? Access and equity, transportation for all ages, incomes, abilities, documentation statuses, et cetera. It's really important to note that about 20% of Amherst families do not own cars. So these are the modes of transportation they have available. Um, their health benefits, you know, the state and local public health people are really promoting alternative transportation. It just gets people out exercising on a regular basis. Safety, Amherst already has, compared to other towns in the area, a relatively high number of pedestrians and transit users. Um, but recent accidents like that one on North Pleasant a couple years ago show there continue to be dangerous conditions. Um, we also think that this can really help local business by getting uh, town people, both it, who are residents and visitors, out interacting with their surroundings. Because when you're on a bus, getting on and off at stops, when you're on a bicycle or when you're walking, you're much more interacting and seeing local businesses. You're much more likely to stop and see the amenities in town. And we also feel like it's really important to support a transportation mode shift. It's gonna mitigate the driving and parking congestion, especially as there's more development in town. It's gonna to reduce carbon, which we're all trying to do in Amherst statewide, nationwide, globally. Um, and there are other kinds of resources that also get used by cars that are just gonna diminish as we do a mode shift. So our prioritization system, our objectives was to make it fair, objective, and replicable. So we'd have a system that would basically exist and any kind of project could go through the system and get ranked 
Um, and people could look at it, understand how that ranking happened. And if someone else did it, they would come up with close to the same ranking. We want it to use accessible, relatively easy to use data, um, possible modular additions of additional data as they become available. And we want to it to result in both individual facilities projects and also a network that supports our overall goals. Um, and then we want it also to be able to be a system that can be used for a complete streets grant, which we otherwise um, are have, have stepped forward in. So, oh yeah, so here's where I went through what we all did. Um, we um, started with the Massachusetts um, TIP matrix. We then reviewed a whole bunch of plans from around the country. Then we developed our tools and approximate scores out of 100. Then we dove into the detailed metrics. And then based on these metrics, we condensed, altered, recalibrated goals, refined metrics. And along the way, we uncovered recommendations for ongoing practices, standards, data gathering, and we collected these organized and prioritized based on our judgment of Amherst needs and resources. So last winter, we gave you a well-developed outline of a scoring system. I'm going to show you um, an image of that in a minute and key metrics for projects. And we reviewed key concepts and overall scoring. LTS is um, a level of traffic stress. LOS is level of service. And we pulled these together in a, in a way that we're proposing for Amherst uh, that's a little bit distinct from other communities. Yeah, um, this we this was the point at which you presented to the District 5 uh, meeting that time at the, at the, at the Crocker Farm. I don't think I gave this slide, but I gave this. Not this slide, time. but this, this point in the process is, is where we were. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then we also presented in, in the TAC approved recommendations for ongoing budget lines, town administrative support and TAC work goals and needs. And that's what I was referencing when I mentioned that one of our recommendations was a part-time multimodal transportation coordinator that would be on staff. Um, since then, we've worked to refine the matrix and the scoring system, but we're still not done. And what we've really decided is we do not have the skills and experience to refine some of the numbers along the way. So at, um, just to go over what it looks like. So um, the level of traffic stress and level of service guidelines, in most towns, they have four levels. And when they did our bed and bike plan, the PVPC also analyzed with four levels. And, and the fourth level is the most stress. Um, the least level of service. But if you do that, then something like East Pleasant comes up as a level four, which means it's like the worst possible. But if you think about East Pleasant as a bicyclist, and I've biked on East Pleasant many times, I'm thinking of the part where you're beyond where the sidewalk is, right? North of Hill Park heading towards Pine Street. It's, it's pretty manageable compared to say um, the highway <laughs> or route. <laughs> Right. So we decided we actually needed, instead of a four tier system, we needed a six tier system in which level three or four for an um, active, confident adult bicyclist might be okay. But five, uh, five might be like Pine Street, which is narrow. A really strong, confident bicyclist might be able to do it, but you don't have the shoulders of East Pleasant, which would be more like a four. Um, and then six would be like a highway. So we decided we really needed six tiers to differentiate and to kind of incentivize moving a Pine Street towards an East Pleasant, as well as an East Pleasant towards a, I don't know, what's a better one? Um, um, East Pleasant south of Pine, uh, east, uh, south of Village Park, right? Where it has the, the sidewalk. Um, so what we tried to do is we, um, like describe, we, we have the numbers along the left, we gave it sort of a couple words that kind of describe it, then a little more description of who we're thinking about, a description of what the route looks like, Amherst example, and then this is the place where it really hits the road, so to speak, where you define exactly what it looks like in place. And this piece is really important because this is ultimately going to be what, what decides what we're aiming for for each of our projects and intersections and sidewalks and streets and bike lanes and how we score things is going to be based on these design standards. So this would be for a corridor like a straight shot. This would be for an intersection. And this is sort of other things. So this is um, 
one of the things when I presented this last year, Kim really, you asked a lot of questions about, wait, don't we have to differentiate bikes and pedestrians? I was really trying to avoid that. I decided you're right. So this is the bike one. Um, so we also have one of these for pedestrians and one for transit, but um, I didn't bring it up because I think this kind of gives you the sense of, of what we're trying to do. So this is one of the things that we decided we just really need help with someone who's dealt with these kinds of systems in other towns and cities to really help us define exactly what this ought to be. Um, and then what it all goes into is a matrix that looks like this. So the level of service or, or level of traffic stress, and again, we're bringing those together into one system, um, comes up to maybe 30 of 100 points. So, so Eve, um, yeah. I, I, I think it, it would be good if you, you know, just sidetracked a little bit and described how you're bringing those two, the old version of level of service to, the new, to this one. That's Thanks, it's, Aaron. it's important. Thank yeah, you, Aaron. I also have to leave. I'm very sorry. Uh, you know, right in the middle of this, it's. Um, uh, I need to, you know, know more about this, but uh, gotta go. Sorry. Thanks so much, Darcy. Thank you, Darcy. Bye. Thank you for, for staying as long as you could. <laughs> Bye. Bye. All right. Well, um, I think everyone else has seen this, uh, so maybe I don't. I don't know, but well. Uh, Marcus, Marcus yeah, I don't know if Marcus has seen it. That's, I haven't seen really the weird. final version, but I certainly, I mean, it certainly gave comments to the, you know, when we were kind of going through it last year. Yeah. So, I am yeah, interested so the, in understanding it. This is, this is the LTS LOS. This would kind of set what we're aiming for. And then this is where we actually would rank projects. Yeah. So I do, I just, I just, Want, want to say that the LOS, so normally uh, loss of service or level of service um, is, is used to refer to how well or how long you have to wait for the light to change to go through an intersection. Um, and that's not, that's not what this is. This is um, a, a, a level of comfort or some other you know, definition of what the service so, is. Yeah. Uh, and that's, and that's that, that, um, so, I just just- so that has to do that and has that's, to do with our research. Yeah, but that's and, that is I, that's the that's the heart of this, really. So we're looking to to grade yeah, the level of so service me, and what we're describing service. That's all, yeah. I'm sorry, but that's important. So, let, that's important. so I looked I looked around the country for a multimodal level of service, right? Because it's true for cars, it's basically flow through, right? Um, and the the best one I found in the whole country was Bellevue, Washington. And they did a whole research on, you know, how has everyone done it, why and what. And they basically found that um, doing it based on vehicles or pedestrians, like numbers passing in a certain amount of time, like is not useful. Because like if you're a pedestrian and you're walking around downtown, your goal is not to like pass through as fast as possible, right? Your, your goal is to feel like this is a place you want to be and you might have fun like walking down the sidewalk and, and, and maybe not pass, pass through, through. Right. Yeah. right? Right, yeah, yeah. And for a bicyclist, what's really important is not actually how many people are passing through, but does it feel like a place where someone who hasn't been here before is gonna be like, oh yeah, I'd like to like bike on that path. So it's much more about sort of how it feels to the people who go there and, and try to walk or bike in that space. So, yeah. so that was really what Bellevue, Washington did with level of service for bicycling, pedestrian, and transit. And so theirs was really the model that I followed. Um, so I'm just going to cut to the chase since you guys have seen this, uh, the rest of it, the details. We decided we really need technical help. Um, and this was actually, we also really wanted Chris to hear this because um, Chris was the one who was saying that she thought we might be able to potentially get funding from the PVPC for another grant for some of this technical help. So um, we want someone to help with that six level matrix and advise on whether these articulate the range of options that will move us towards safe, accessible, sustainable multimodal transportation. And not just that, but a network that promotes the town transportation goals. Then we want someone to review and advise the, the prioritization system, so the scoring system. 
on how to bring that into the prioritization system and to advise on remaining data needs because other data needs like accidents and population and low income and diversity of population all would be things that we would need to bring in and we need to have sense of what data is available at what kinds of geographic scales um, and how easily because it's got to be easy to use. And then as time or money allows, we think it'd be really great to run a different for scoring options. So for example, scoring a little bit higher for network connectivity, connectivity on that prioritization scoring sheet or um, scoring a little higher for safety and playing that out to see what kinds of projects would get prioritized over time. And it's not so much just like say, this is what would happen this way. Um, and I don't know, it's, it's like a decision tool. So that if we go to the council or we go to a public meeting and we say, you know, we're proposing this scoring system and here's what it would produce. But if you really want a different outcome, here's the scoring system that would get you that different outcome and, and tell us which one you prefer. So we don't feel like we have the technical skills to do these things by ourselves. And um, I apologize that it sort of took us a lot of fiddling to really realize that, but that's the reality and we'd love. Um, anyway, we, we're happy to continue. We'd like to continue. We think what we've done is good, but we really can't finish it without someone who's got, um, you know, we think we need someone who has actually dealt with these kinds of systems before um, for other cities and towns. So, so that's what um, I got. Yeah. So thank you. That that's that's super helpful. And and I I, I appreciate sort of seeing that again after being asked. You know the suggestions that Darcy has. And so maybe what um, I would ask the the subcommittee to do. Um, and so I'm understanding that you know you've gone as far as you really feel like you can for now. Um, uh, I would like to, so, so, so yeah, go, go ahead, Gilford. Uh, give me a second to put my thoughts together. So if, if the subcommittee has it all wrapped up to where you think you're at your, your stopping point, we do have another source of funding. We've been trying to get worked out, worked out. So what I need to do, what I would like to do is I'll get your stuff and kind of have it so I can pass it on to the group we're doing this with and see if we can move that along that way. Um, so the, yeah, that's what, what I was what I was thinking, trying to articulate is, is something along those lines exactly that um, there's, um, I would like, I was looking at it again and thinking about what Darcy said and now what Guilford has said is that it'd be nice if we had um, uh, so, sort of that last slide that you said, that you showed, here's what we need help doing sort of expand that a little bit into a proposal or request. Um, and um, and um, the earlier slides, for instance, you, you know, the, the bicycle version of the LOS, LTS matrix um, to, um, you know, sort of expand sort of and maybe nothing needs to be done to that, but that is my, what I might offer as an example of what we're trying to, you know, how we're trying to put all those pieces together as, as part of the, the request. I'm sure you've done a grant proposal a couple of times, Eve, so. Um, well, we actually don't need, we don't need a grant proposal. No, I think, I think that that last slide just needs to be expanded a little bit um, to be a little more descriptive of you know what 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 the work is. Uh, for instance, I think it's it's important now. They're just saying we're going to do a bunch of stuff to say the stuff we're going to do includes um, it. Um, uh, you know, safety and you know the efficacy, which depends on the system that we're trying to make most efficient. Um, you know, social justice, all those things that you are incorporating in and, and need to. You know, figure out uh, because that's the thing that that's uh, that's what I want to tell the TSO is the work that you know we're we're thinking about putting together. Tracy, so I guess I have a question for Guilford because what he's describing is that the, he's already got a process and 
you know, some ideas in place about how to proceed on this. So I, I guess I'd like to hear from Guilford about what he wants from us. Like, even if we have our own vision, it sounds like, Guilford, what do you need? And then like to take it to the next step. So if you if you think you've wrapped everything up as much as you can, let's just pull it all together and talk it through so I can forward it on to the people that we might be working with. We still have to get it all figured out if we can work with them and get it approved. And then, but now's a good time to start pulling this stuff together. So, so, so are you who, saying that them? you're going to be doing something? It's not going to be like in house. It's going to be a no, it's outside group or. So, do, would you see that we would still, would the subcommittee or the tax still be involved at the next stage of the process, or would we just be like turning it over? To no, they want to. They want to ask you lots of questions. Yeah, I would. I would imagine. I'm going to guess. Maybe request. But it's the, the, the whole TAC uh, and, and maybe no. the subcommittee as, as an immediate adjunct at that point. Uh, so who, what is this? What is this process, this magic process that you're, you're well, it's talking about? It's just part of the Complete Streets program. It's the second phase. Right. OK. So, oh, so it's, at the, it's at the state level. Yeah. So you're going to get a little bit of a taste of what the state wants out of it. And yeah. You, right. you, you Been there, done that. Your, you get to push your pieces in and then try to figure out once we're done with the process, how to keep your pieces more prevalent and mm -hmm. sidetrack some of the state issues. Now we understand. So so what what do what do they need? What do we need to give them for that? I, I just need, well, from you guys, we just need to take what the, the subcommittees put together and put it in a package that I can give to the people we might be working with. The other piece is something we have to do as a staff is to get this, this uh, yeah. get that piece approved that will actually let us do it. Um, and then in order for it to be, I mean, my understanding is order for the prioritization plan or whatever we're calling it to be submitted to the mass DOT, the complete streets program for approval and like move Amherst up a level would be that it would need to be the plan would need to be approved by like council. To, right, and it would need to be like formally submitted to Mass DOT. Is that correct? Yes. How aware is Paul of this? He's aware. Just, just aware, or is, is it possible that that it, it's engaging his his consideration as he thinks about our charge? No, I don't think so. I mean, this is a this is a small piece. I mean, whether we whether it's the TSOs charged with this right. or the tax charged with this, this is something that gets you on the screen to get state, I hate to say it, everybody calls it free money, but to get you on the, the state's dole. Nothing's free, okay. Nothing's free. Um, One of the things that- Well, and I argue. think, I mean, Aaron, there is a, under the Mass DOT website, there is a complete streets website and just like, I wasn't able to find, I don't know if it's back, but I wasn't even able to find the Amherst plan, the policy that was originally submitted, but it is on the state website and you can go to the map and like click and download it again. And that was the one that I had shared back with Amber when she was talking about the website. Um, so yeah. it is possible to go to that website and you can see both for the initial plan, the com I mean, the initial complete streets policy, which is like considered, I guess, tier one, as well as any towns that have adopted the a prioritization plan. I mean, anybody can, anybody from the TAC or the public can look at any of those, you know, from that website, I can send that website around. I think I have already, but I can resend it. And if anybody wants to see like what, yeah. kind of what the state's expectations are when they're, receiving these and then they give them quote approval so that would be good so um i, I asked for a, a copy of all of that that presentation that you just gave for bruce um i think uh, I, I'm, I'm feeling like well i'm going to ask if we are confident that that would be the thing to use as it is pretty much just as it is um or maybe with an expanded last slide. I, I still like the idea. That's that's sort of the money slide. Um, um, to to say, Darcy, Tiesa, Pam, Brian, here is here is, you know, the way we're considering making decisions. Not finished. Can't finish it without help. But here is sort of answering that question, and then um, 
maybe clean up the um, um, the first thing that Guilford showed us, the matrix of projects, the projects list, and send those two things along as the answers to the questions which are not quite asked yet. Um, I just kind of want want an affirmation from the committee that that's that's something that that we should do um, in response to that. Aaron, or not. Can, can we wait a minute on that question? Um, Absolutely. Just because sort of moving on to another topic, which is what how we say to the TSO and the council. Yeah, um, no, I'm, I'm sorry. Yes, you're right. I, I, I'm dragging us off into a different direction. Sorry. You no, haven't finished. It's important, right? okay. but, um, so Guilford, um, do you, is there a consultant that you would hire with that? Money? Is that the idea? The state actually pays for the consultant, yes. Oh, the great. And do you have picked out, or would we pick out the consultant? Uh, well, we've already kind of picked somebody to use that's done a couple of these already. Uh, Nelson Nygaard? Uh, no, no. No, Nelson Nygaard has gone through some uh, employee changes. I don't know. I don't, they're not really, um, well, they've gone through some employee changes. We have, a, we have the, two. I was just going to say that a contracting firm that I would love to at least talk to would be Alta because they did several of the plans that we actually looked at. Okay. Uh, we actually, we, we, we can talk to them, but we've actually kind of already kind of talked to someone who's actually been doing some stuff for us already, but we're not locked in exactly. Okay. That's, that's so I think, thing. I, I don't know how Bruce and Tracy feel or the rest of you guys feel from the TAC, but um, it, it sounds like potentially a fabulous thing um, to be able to take what we've done. I think we could package it into clearer and you know, that would not be the presentation style that we have, but like, you know, a little more explanation of this is what we were trying to do. This is the specifics of what still needs to get done. I think we could, we could write that out just fine. Um, or we could tell them verbally. I think my, my question, and in partly it's just that I'm emotionally attached because I spent a year and a half working on this, but like if we pass it on to them, do they then sort of do it? That, what I've seen from consultants in the past is, you know, they kind of have their way of doing things and they put your specific data in it and they, they churn out sort of the, the thing that they've done before with your specific data. And since we're doing things in kind of an innovative way with the six tier system and stuff like that, you know, to what extent would would our, would our ideas still be part of um, what they would incorporate, and and could we still have kind of you know a a, a strong role in shaping that? You, you get a, you get a role for shaping it, but if you're going to get take money from the people you're taking the money from, you have to kind of put it into their into their they already have their little way of doing it. So you will lose some of your uniqueness. To be put into the, to this mass dot methodology, but you just have to, and the, the consultant will be more than happy to work with you and talk about what what's the little things to change and then how to pull it out. So you're, you're doing two things here: you're getting their help, but you're also going to make a document that the mass DOT is going to accept and put yeah. you in the final stage three of the of the complete streets program, and then you just pull it out or you take it and you readjust back to the, the key things you you have going on. And well, I really don't think, I really don't think in the prioritization part, it really is going to change that much. Some of the bigger changes are gonna be in actually how we present the projects once they're prioritized and how they're kind of yeah. um, put together in the mass DOT format. That's the biggest, that's the biggest difference I see right now. Yeah, I mean, it sounds to me, um, like the the what we're asking so the the what we're asking for our technical bits and pieces that you know don't change you know it's dot can handle them what's innovative and i think what we can't lose is what their value is to us um and and that and and maybe what they don't address are some things that we think are important to do technically because they don't do them but everything else would be handled so um 
so I, I, I guess I didn't, I didn't hear the, the answer from the subcommittee yet as to um, how much more work they wanna to do to make it ready for that complete streets project. Um, I mean, yeah, as a member of the subcommittee, I mean, maybe we can put it on the agenda for next time or, you know, and have Ooh, something. That's, that's fraught. I don't know. Well, or, um, you yes. know, just move it along. I mean, in that, I mean, obviously, like, as you've said, like, there's some changes we would make and so on. Um, uh, I'd, I'd be, I'd be happy to do that for real. Um, Guilford, is there, is there a time that we're pushing up against or is, is uh, January when our next meeting is 14th, the 10th? No, that's fine. There's other things we're pushing up against, but not you guys aren't what I'm pushing up against. Not that one? Okay. So um, Guilford, you want kind of a written document that would go to the consultant about what we've done and, and what we see we're, we're handing to them and what needs to happen now? Your, your presentation's a good, a good first introduction to how you're trying to do it, and then from there, um, we can let them come back with what they're asking for and questions and if they want the, the more detailed information, which I, they probably will, but that's a good, I think a presentation would get them started. Well, and I think, I guess one question too, Guilford, is like, would the consultant be available to meet with the TAC or the subcommittee, you know, to just kind of overview like what, what has been part of our process for a while, right? So, I mean, yes, we can put together uh, something written, but obviously, like, if you just look at Eve's slides, you know, without the context of what she's talking about, you're missing a big part of the vision there, too, so. No, they have they have meeting time and all great. that good stuff. In the... That'd be great. So maybe one question is whether the TAC would even want to do a motion, whether you guys would want to do a motion to approve that the subcommittee could go ahead and talk to the consultant about this. Or do yeah. a meeting with the, or invite. Yeah, the I, 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 yeah, I don't know. I don't know what we'd be asking for specifically yet to to to, to know how to 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 answer that motion. Um, but um, and and, and, and but yeah. So um, I would I would maybe I would propose that as part of our work at our next meeting, which will be next year, um, that we work through. The details we talked about working through, and we get we um, uh, try to get Gil, give Guilford time to um, uh, describe, understand, and de and describe to us what our role, subcommittee of TAC's role, would be in that process, and then take the decision that yes, that's what we want to do uh, formally. I mean, I don't know. I don't. I don't. I don't feel like I have enough to grab onto to say this is what we're going to go ahead and vote on and and, and put into our minutes that we're doing. Sure. Um, uh, I don't want to put things off. I you know that, that's not. Uh, well, but, let's put it on the agenda for next time, and that I mean, maybe the subcommittee. If we're not meeting until the fourteenth, which is like almost a month, I mean, maybe the subcommittee. Can is is it the fourteenth? It's not the fourteenth. I keep saying that, but I think I'm wrong. I think it's the seventh or the or the. Amber or the, knows. The, Amber this knows. She tried to set me straight earlier and I just was not having it. Kimberly, you're, tr you're trying to get a word out edgewise there. Kim. I, I, I am delighted by our very productive conversation. I am being pestered by my family to come to this. Yes. Um, we What's that? We <laughs> it is the last so, night of Hanukkah. So, it before, is the last before, day of Hanukkah. Before I ask Bruce for, for his motion, just one quick thing. Um, are we uh, comfortable with those two things um, to, to show them to um, uh, the TSO as to, to give them to answer the question is, well, what do you do? Yes. That's what we're, that's what we're doing. Yeah. So wait, so we're talking about sharing Guilford's document with the uh, priority list, right? That's what it's we're sharing Guilford, at this it's time. It's not Guilford, it's our document, but yes. All right, so that's, the, that's document, the, yeah, the, the document. Yeah, the document. The document that Guilford keeps on his computer. Yes, that one. System, the, the secret. That one. <laughs> yes, the secret document. So right. that document yes. and um, the slideshow that Eve just just showed us. We could do that, but I guess I, if we're going to tighten it up before we're taking it to the consultant, the, I mean, the TSO isn't meeting again until I think like the seventh or something too. So, I guess I would prefer not sharing it, sharing the 
interim product with the TSO at this time. I okay, prefer no. to just show that list that, you know, that other list has been worked on for so long and so no, on. And that. Could, but I, but I feel like but, it's very important to let them know that. Oh, absolutely. Structured way right. of putting right. items onto that list. Definitely, like, that's definitely. Very, very important. Not I agree. List. And Gil and Guilford was saying that the presentation as it is would be enough to start with. Okay. Maybe we don't need sure. another document. Um, and and right? I'm only I'm only asking because okay. I think that as it is, it is very useful and it will answer the questions that the TSO are asking, um, especially if we're clear as to where it is in its right. formation. Well, and so maybe we could be on the TSO agenda in January as well. And I might even ask for that. That, yes. would, be, that would make sense. Yeah. I mean, it wouldn't be accurate if you represent that as that's everything the TAC does. But no, of you course. That I, guess, I mean, no, I guess the, I guess the only thing questions that they ask. The I mean, only thing with the slideshow is I just feel like it's. I mean, if we were going to share it with TSO, I guess I'd rather do that live, personally, than you know, an Eve or or somebody. I mean, just rather than just send them the slideshow like without oh, yeah. this kind of larger oh, context yeah. is what I just don't want because it sounded like Aaron was trying to collect materials to just send to TSO. If he wants to do that with the priority list, that's fine. But I just don't want to have the whole, um, our whole prioritization system kind of put at that level and then have the like, TSO members while we're not there, like kind of pick over the details when we're not actually presenting it. I would prefer it be a presentation personally. Yeah, I agree. Kim, Kim, Kim has to go. Yeah, we all have to go. Okay, so um, the answer, the answer, so the answer that I'll take is that we'll, I'll send the projects list, sort of get that yes. out there, and and describe the um, the rest of it um, for now. Yeah, well, I would also ask to get on the on the agenda, and as soon as and we get, get confirmed the agenda, as being on the agenda, three then things we have to write them down the, now. Then we can send out the the presentation. We just uh, right. need to get them right. to confirm us on the agenda and then we can play ball. Well, or we, you know, present it and we... Yeah. Right. Well, I mean, but I would Absolutely. think it would be good for you to send it out prior to presenting. No, of course. Understood. Yeah, yeah I mean, yeah. the TSO, they have a packet that they put online of yeah. like everything that's coming up, so... Yeah. Go, Bruce. Okay, I move to adjourn. For the all discussion, right. all those Happy in favor. All right, thank you. <laughs> I second. Bye. Thank you. Hey, thank you, everyone. Thank you, everybody. All right. Happy yeah. Hanukkah. Happy all right, bye-bye. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, Amber. Oh, yeah, we're still there. Thank you, Amber. Um, Thanks, Amber. Happy holidays. Uh, Bye, Amber. You too. Happy holidays. Happy.